Hey everyone, Chell here with Prismatic Powders. In today's video, we're going to talk about some common problems that are found in powder coating finishes. We'll discuss how to diagnose them, remedies, and prevention. Before we get started, click those like and subscribe buttons, hit that bell icon. It's completely free. All right, now every now and then you think that everything is going smoothly as you're powder coating, you're pulling your rack from the oven after you're cured it, and then You've got problems in your finish. Starbursts, fish eyes, craters, maybe old debris of stuff falling off the rack. Otherwise flawless parts, eh, it is a huge bummer and it's time consuming to say the least. Thankfully, most of the time it is preventable. So let's go through some of the more common problems that powder coaters see. So let's start with fish eyes and craters. Fish eyes are most commonly produced when there is surface contamination on your parts, particularly oils and lubricants, but rust and other corrosion can also create these defects. Fish eyes will look like small little bumps in the powder with a small hole in the center, and this typically goes straight to the substrate. And this is a, a potential pathway for corrosion, so it's something to really be careful about. Craters, on the other hand, look similar, but most of the time it's more of a depression rather than a, a hole that goes down to the surface material. The prevention for contamination is to simply make sure that you're degreasing your parts with a mild degreasing agent before you blast the surface of those parts. However, something to note, if you have parts that are really caked with old grease or oils, you want to get as much of that off of the parts as possible before you get them into your blast cabinet or sandblasting booth. Otherwise, you really risk contaminating your blast media. And you can do this with like a wire brush or a rag that's been saturated in some degreaser. And of course, you could also let the parts soak in some degreasing solution as well. Now for these situations, we would also suggest placing your parts in the oven prior to coating. And I'd say at least 30 minutes to help dry out any left behind oils. The takeaway is that you really need to degrease the surfaces of your parts to avoid contamination. And depending on your setup, it's probably a good idea to do this before you blast. Unfortunately, if you get these spots on your part, it's best to start over. Uh, even if you could recoat and get it to look okay, you have the problem, which is contamination on the substrate and long-term adhesion is questionable. Starring, starbursts, or stars. Stars are named for their sometimes starry-like appearance, if you look at them really close, um, but they're also referred to as back ionization, and back ionization occurs when the powder on the part has too much charge. The charged particles can no longer find a pathway to ground, and so they get rejected and you get these spots, kind of pockmarks that build up on your part. And they typically present themselves in multi-stage applications, but it can happen with the first coat if your voltage settings are too high. Now, the heavier you spray, the more likelihood of getting back ionization. But thankfully, stars are something that you can see before you cure your parts, and they're something that you have a lot of control over. The key to eliminating starring is to first ensure that you have a good ground to your surface and then adhere to the KV microamp principle of as low as possible, as high as necessary. The lower voltage will be less likely to create stars because powder will not have the high charge that creates them. And if you're doing a multi-stage project, it's most important to really pay attention to your voltage settings. If the part takes powder at a low voltage, then your risk of back ionization remains low, even when doing multiple coats. Pinholes and outgassing bubbles. Pinholes look like pinholes. Little holes on the surface of the coating, and they are the result of outgassing. Most of the time, these pinholes will go straight down to the surface of the substrate, which, like before, is an issue when exposed to moisture because it's going to lead to corrosion beneath the powder. Now, sometimes outgassing will produce bubbles within the coating, but in either case, it's a result of trapped gases within the substrate that are drawn to the surface through the curing process. This is particularly a problem when you have cast metals because the casting process creates a porous product, so you have all these trapped gases in there and they release. 
The preventative solution for this is to either outgas the part for at least 30 minutes prior to coating and at a temperature that is at least as hot as the cure schedule calls for. Another solution is to apply a base coat of some anti-gas primer before applying the top coat. Sagging and orange peel. Uh, these are both kind of a texture thing that happens um, and they're both because you're spraying too heavy. Uh, if you see this on your parts, you need to either adapt your powder settings to match your hand speed or adapt your hand speed to match your powder settings. Unfortunately, if you see these things on your parts, uh, you need to do a really good job of sanding and scuffing to smooth things out before you recoat. And for best results, you can always strip or blast everything and start over. That's probably not what you wanted here, but that's always for best results. But the key is that you're just getting too much powder on the part and you're getting that little orange peely ripple effect. Or sometimes it's kind of a, a wave that comes down and that's your sag. Crazing. Do you know what that is? Well, crazing presents itself as a bunch of small cracks in a transparent top coat. It's the result of an undercured top coat. So these cracks, can, they can develop over a number of hours or even days after your part has been pulled from the oven. And the remedy is very, very simple. Ensure that your parts have reached the correct part metal temperature for the powder that you're using before starting your cure timer. And if you already have some parts that have some crazing on them, just put them back in the oven and restart the curing process and you'll be good to go. So that's about as simple as you can get. Um, the key to preventing it is just to make sure, we always recommend using an IR thermometer. Get in there, get your part metal temperature, make sure your part is up to temperature, not your oven, before you start your cure timer. Now, that's gonna do it for today's video. We thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.